Welcome back folks. Uh, today I want to show you a little bit about what I'm doing to transform my place into a food producing powerhouse in a permaculture way. Uh, most of what you're going to see me do revolves around this. I do have annuals here that I'm planting and uh, it'll be heirloom or open pollinated seeds that I can save for next year. That's, that's a way to have your own food security. Um, what you're seeing here, you may have seen before, is my uh, Bartlett pear tree, or rather Baldwin pear tree. I gave my Bartlett pear to my neighbors uh, a few years ago. And I've got a little rattlesnake bean here climbing up, and we've got Scott Head's uh, single seed challenge right there, my little thing. Not sure what day it is. I won't do an update on that. But we've got storms in the area. For the next couple of days and we've got frost coming after that so i've still got my frost protection for my little bean here um but this corner uh, let me back up just a second i only have a half an acre to work with but every bit of it i want it to become a place of growing food or medicinals of all kinds like my uh mullen i've got several mullen to get transplanted out here and do it in the right way. Um, and I've, I've got some mulberry trees and some and some uh, native, um, well, not native, but they're they're uh, Indian peach trees. That's what most people call them. <laughs> These names that we come up with things, but the Native Americans um, spread these out. When the Spanish came over, they brought peaches with them. They had traded or stolen, however you want to say it. Uh, from China, all peaches originated from China. The Spanish brought them over here. Uh, they were given to the Native Americans, or they stole them or got them or whatever, however you want to look at it, and they spread them all throughout the country. And I've got more than a few of those that I'm going to incorporate into my property here. Walk out my door and eat food uh, and try to do that year-round. This is a... Um, a native red mulberry tree. It is a wonderful food producing powerhouse. Um, you can keep it as a bush, low line. You can uh, leave it as a tree. A mature red mulberry tree will give you 250 pounds of food on average each year. And that food is good for you. That food is also good for your animals. Uh, the, just the berries themselves. Now listen to this. The leaves of the red mulberry tree, and I think probably most mulberries, have an extremely high content of protein and other nutrients. Um, they are excellent fodder for animals, and they are edible to humans as well. Red mulberries are a fantastic, strong plant that you can have uh, to add as a perennial in your in your food forest in your backyard um, I use them heavily here or will be using them heavily here uh, in in my food forest and permaculture landscape um, you can grow grass or you can grow food I like the idea of growing food but what I'm going to do is put it in here okay I've got my my pear tree here with the rocks incorporated to protect my bean and to give um, a place for my terrible lizards and toads to, to live, letting nature help me. Right in here, I've got my secret garden. I'm mulling, and I'm going to be doing some things in here as we go along. But today, the, the, the old saying is uh, there's never a better uh, day to plant a tree to today. Plant trees. Um, I want to plant fruit trees. I'll show you something else. Uh, Bull's Garden has got an excellent, well, he's got an excellent channel. And he's showing you, kind of like I am, um, how to do things. A lot of people out here doing the same thing. It's wonderful. And I hope that we all give you some great ideas. Look at this pear tree. Okay? Got this pear tree coming in here. And this long branch coming out. Pears, they love to grow up straight reach for the sky like they were being held up by 
a bad guy. Reach for the sky. Well, what I'm going to do with my pear tree, it was, it was quite a while back. I looked at what nature was doing and these limbs. And there's an old technique called espalier. Uh, espalier. Many, many different ways that people say that. That's where you grow your trees, full-size trees, but you keep them pruned. You keep them pruned low. And you let them spread out across a trellis or something else. You pick your fruit down close to the ground where you can get to it. It also, it, it actually was a technique that was invented by the French, I believe. French or Italians. Um, they endured a, a time when the earth was going through one of the great cooling cycles. Not a full ice age, but it was getting colder. In order for them to produce their own food consistently, they trained their plants to grow near their stone walls. That's how they got started. The stone walls created a microclimate um, and held more heat through the year, and that allowed them to continue growing uh, these plants, a lot of their grapes and a lot of their fruit trees. That's where espalier uh, came from. Now, I'm going to utilize that technique here um, to do many things. It won't be just one or two. Um, you just got to look at things in every way possible. Um, and that's a, that's a tip for you right there. Just look at, look at different things. Now, what I've also got here, this is what I, I just call my, my, I call it my power button, but it's, uh, it's compost. It's just a cold, I don't care about what happens here, compost pile. I throw everything in here that's organic, it's going to break down, uh, even the paper. Just throw it in there, I don't care. That, that's making worms in there, and it's making some good soil whenever I get ready to tear it up and move it out of the way, which will probably be this year. I'm going to, re, I'm going to move that. Um, but... Anyhow, that, it, that's going to be very powerful right there. Lots of compost in there already. I've thrown everything in there. Let me, let me stop what I'm doing here to talk and actually get this tree in the ground before I lose the day and might make this video too long. And I'm going to do it in a permaculture way. So plant a tree. Let me go plant this one. I'll be back with you in a second. I just noticed something here. Uh, amongst and in, in the area that I'm going to clear out, I've got a bunch of natural plants here and they're all our friends. Okay. Uh, I love them, but again, they're, they're having their party and they're going crazy. So I'm going to further classify them as friends and enemies. I've told you about blackberries and how I'm going to dig some of those up instead of just getting rid of them, chopping them up, and throwing them away. I'm going to see what I've got here as a resource and go ahead and dig these up and transplant them somewhere else. Wild strawberries, um, probably got a wild lettuce coming up right there. Wild, more wild strawberries. I'm just going to, those are going to be, um, those are going to be gone. But I'm going to pick out my friends and let my enemies help me in another way. Okay, here's another little quick break in here. I dug up my little uh, blackberry and I wanted to show you, give you a chance to see what it does underneath the soil. The things that a lot of us don't get to see, especially the younger people. This uh, has got a long runner that it sent out and what I thought were two individual plants, but actually three, three individual, well, three plants Two of them came off the, uh, the the parent plant. I pulled up the roots, and there was two more that popped up. Okay, so you can see just just how far these things go. This is going to make a lot of food for me. Just wanted to show y'all that of what um, you know blackberries will do. Now there's I say blackberries, but uh, a lot of people call them brambleberries because it's a large family of uh, briared uh, plants that have berries on them. 
uh, even, uh, you know, raspberries and things like that. Bramble berries what might be the better way to say it since I'm not exactly sure what species this is, but it's most likely common, ordinary wild blackberry. Let me get to that tree. Here's a quick look at what I'm cutting into here. The all those roots. The more of that I get rid of, the better my tree will have a chance to do well. Get rid of those roots as you're making your uh, hookah culture beds. Okay, I've got this hole dug out pretty well. I've reached the subsoil, hard clay packed down. I'm gonna show you something. What I've done is use my digging fork to bust up that subsoil for about the first five or six inches. I'm gonna leave it there because that's nutrition. The roots will go down through there and get the nutrition out of that subsoil. They need that too, not just what's living up in that top layer. They send the roots down. I've made fractures in that and that will help give the roots a place to easily go through. They'll find those and go. Pardon the rude traffic here. And, and, and my labored breathing. <laughs> oh, anyhow, uh, I busted up the subsoil, giving the roots the best possible chance and for water to penetrate deeper into the soil. So next is, you know what's next is wood. Boom, get a hole, put some wood in it. One layer on the bottom. Put down a layer of dirt. In this case, the subsoil, put that back in there and then start making another layer of wood. Okay, there's an, one more healthy layer of wood going down up under there. Um, let me just say this. Um, the reason for this is when you're doing hugel culture, you're putting this wood in the ground and what it's going to do as it rots away is it's going to soak up rainwater and release that back over time. It is also providing a wonderful place. Um, I think Jack Spierko said it best, but uh, he was talking about uh, support species and cutting them down and letting their roots remain in the ground. Carbon channels, okay? This doesn't have any of that going through here, but what this is doing is putting carbon back in the ground. Uh, I think there's a lot of people that uh, enjoy the thought of that, carbon sequestration. Um, but what it's going to do, it's recycling all that. This wood will break down over time. And what's going to break it down? Fungal activity underground. Um, and the insects and termites. <laughs> termites, uh, fungal activity, bacteria. It's going to break it down and release everything. Whenever I plant this tree, it's going to be up a little bit above grade so that as this, as this shrinks down over time, it'll still be more above grade. But the more of this you put in, the more you really think it through, the better your results are going to be. Now, um, the mulberry tree that I plant today is not going to get very tall, at least not while I'm here. It's going to be kept small. So, uh, you know, this is going to have a huge powerhouse to, 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 to fulfill what it needs. Um, anyhow, uh, if it gets, if it gets real tall, then maybe you have wind concerns. Okay. That's one reason I wanted to mention that, uh, even, even if it does get real tall, the roots that a, that a tall tree have sent out of the ground, into the ground to support it, uh, this, this little bit of fluffy stuff that's here shrinking down will not make a difference. Uh, it, it'll still hold up a big tree. But I wouldn't, you know, test that theory. You know, you want your big trees to be um, uh, more on that solid ground that your tap roots are going into. But smaller trees, this is, this is perfect for it. Absolutely perfect. Bushes, anything that you're growing in the ground. Hugel culture, permaculture, awesome stuff.
All right, now on to the next. We'll cover this on up a little bit and uh, start building it up above the soil line. This was in some wood that I brought over. All right, we need to make sure we make room for nature. Help out the little critters that help us. Okay, what I've done here is taken my mulberry, uh, red mulberry tree out of the bucket and I've used the shovel to break loose uh, these uh, roots in here that are really kind of pot bound at this point, right? So I'm gonna, I, I cut it, cut a split, uh, made a plus sign in the bottom and just gonna spread out those roots. That trauma and spreading out those roots are going to help this establish itself and start spreading out under the ground. It's actually gonna be beneficial for it. It's kind of savage whenever you do that and you think, oh, I'm gonna hurt it. Well, not too bad. It's just a little, little extra uh, thing that you can do. And you really need to, to help it establish out. And I really haven't, well, I've got a little bit there. I'll spread it out a good bit. That's going to help it, I promise. You're not gonna kill your tree. Okay, I've got my red mulberry tree planted in the ground today. I was successful. I've done other things today. This is actually still uh, April the 8th. It's gonna be released on April the 9th, okay? But uh, today I have successfully planted every day. Hashtag plant every day uh, this red mulberry tree is going to grow up in a special way and it's going to make me lots and lots of food for the years to come for me and my family or whoever's on this property uh, after me it's also going to make a lot of new trees to go along with it uh, uh, mulberry trees are one of the easiest trees to root and start new ones from those cuttings now, I'm not going to be able to show you everything that I need to today. Um, there's, there's a lot more I would like to point out to you about what I'm doing on my slopes property and things. But today, I'm going to just leave it right here with you. And, uh, I mean, this old guy's tired. And the battery's almost gone on this phone. I think I've got 3% battery left right now. It's been a busy day. So... I'm going to leave something for the next day, and uh, I truly appreciate you watching this uh, long-winded old man up here huffing and puffing. <laughs> and if I can do it, you can do it. And, uh, you know, I'm I'm over that 50 mark now, and there's a young man that, that I have just discovered. Arkansas Woodcutter pointed him out to me, and I'm going to give him a shout-out in a future video. Uh yeah, yep, I'm gonna, gonna give him a shout out here pretty soon. Uh, well, let me just tell you now, it's, uh, I wanted to make sure I got the name of his channel right, but it's Northern, uh, North, North Michigan Homestead, Northern Michigan Homestead. I'm not sure, I'll go back in and check later. It's at the end of the day for me, but that's, uh, that's who I'm gonna uh, uh, focus on. He's a young man. He's in them young man years building him something up there in northern Michigan where they've still got snow on the ground. I'm out here in my boots and shorts uh, weather, and uh, he's up there with lots of snow still on the ground. Different challenges, different people, different generations doing the same thing, showing you how to grow your own food and become more independent in whatever ways possible. Thank you for watching today. And uh, I will see you on the next time.